It's a rusty clown life-size doll. Wow. It's a dead ringer for... Oh, no pun intended. Hello everyone, Distron here. Welcome back to part 6 of Let's Play Tex Murphy 3 Under a Killing Moon. So now that we've got the rusty doll, we can put the battery in it. And um, that makes weird noises and flails around. It'll become more important later. Anyway, there's a few more things we have to do in here. For a second there, I thought someone had decapitated Inspector Burns and left his head on the floor. What a great mask. Yeah, sound's dropping out a bit. So as I walk up here, see if you can spot the next thing we have to pick up. This is a key to the back room, as he's going to say in a second. Hmm. Maybe this key fits in that employee's only door. And it does, of course. Whoa! These these controls can be really unwieldy sometimes. If you notice while I'm walking, sometimes I just stop dead. That's because I'm hitting the space bar so I can stop turning. It's a good thing there's no gun battles or fights or anything in this game. Otherwise, I'd be pretty screwed. Ooh, what's in the barrel? <laughs> Lordy. Well, this is where Rusty ended up. What a way to go. And I'm willing to bet he didn't crawl in here on his own. Someone murdered him. Big Fat No Prize for those who can guess who that was. I think there's just one more thing we need to get from here. Where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. Don't you just love puzzle games? All the random crap that you pick up. I, I remember the first time I played through this game and I was, like, getting towards the end. I was in some big um, office building and I think I needed to get past this, this century robot thing. And, um, and I needed the dart gun to do it. And I had to come all the way back here to come and get it. I think it was actually one of the few things that I that I missed the first time round. Anyway, let's watch Inspector Burns. Hi. Hello. Sounds cutting out again. Hey, kid. Oh. Ed, it's me, Inspector oh, Burns. And as we all know, fire can be our friend, but fire can be our foe. Oh no! So many times, fire starts so carelessly. And what can fires do? Fires burn you. Never, never light matches. No, no, no. Fire is dangerous. Fire made me look like this. Do you want to look like me? No, no, no. Don't look like Inspector Burns. Don't play with matches. Uh, Inspector Burns. I always thought he was a freak, but the kids love him. So does Ardo. And with that, we can now pretend to be Inspector Burns. For, um... Aldo, I think he said his name was. <laughs> I love how the outside is just painted on. And they didn't even bother to make like a little cone or something. It still gets me how this game does not have parallaxing skies. You know, like in Doom. It's such a simple technique and yet it can be used to such great effect. Especially back in the old days, before skyboxes. I walk up the steps to Koi Tower and spot a small figure lurking in the shadows. In the half-light I can see only the person's profile, but it's definitely Beak. As I walk towards him, he glances around, then approaches me warily, like a vegetarian sizing up a pot pie. What are you staring at? The Elephant Man, apparently. 
I actually went through most of what he had to say, but it was mostly filler, so I left most of it out of the video. Pardon my staring, but that is a truly impressive schnoz you've got. Ah, uh, come on, don't make fun, huh? What do you want? Who are you? Uh, Chelsea sent us. I'm a friend of Chelsea Bando. You told me I could probably find you nosing around up here. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea, good egg, nice looker. So, uh, what do you want? Let's be a jackass. That's always fun. Oh, nothing. I just wanted to see if your nose is as big as everyone says. What, you some kind of joker? Maybe I'll see you around. See, now I'm wondering if if he actually leaves or if Beak just throws him out. Anyway. I have to say I like this. You leave me alone, Mr. Snoopy guy. I really like this one, too. Check it out. He goes on this whole whiny trip, and then he just goes back to Stoneface. Please, Beak. I'm begging you. I'm just a crappy detective, and I need your help. Jeez, fella, you're more pathetic than I am. Okay, let's do it right this time. We have to actually give him the the nose job you leave me certificate, alone, Mr. Snoopy guy, that we got in the mail earlier. Look, don't be snooty, Beak. I'm here to cut you a deal, literally. In the face. Okay, I can use this. My nose has started sagging lately. Makes it hard to breathe. Now, what kind of info are you looking for, hmm? I demand to know who put the bop in the bop she bop she bop. Well, since you probably don't know anything about that, why don't we talk about Chelsea? Chelsea! Hmm, smart girl and a real look at the boot. She's got a cute little nose. What about the Crusades? Big trouble! It's causing mutant blood to boil, and I don't want to be around when the bullets start flying. And where is that accent from? I'm sure it's a stereotype of something, I just don't know what. Anyone with a hunker like that can't be all bad. Malden's no rocket scientist. But I hear that he's not on the take. Always a plus, I, I suppose. I helped him out a couple of times, so he leaves me alone. Okay, let's get what we came for. Let's ask about McFlem. I think he's dead. And I'll bet McFlem had something to do with it. Word was the two of them were smuggling illegal novelty items from Hong Kong and Rusty Cross Flem. <laughs> illegal novelty Rusty items? Disappeared. Like, like what, Uber Flem Bowl has had a memorabilia? terrible fear of clowns. Bozophobia. I once saw Flem pretty drunk and he said he had nightmares of Rusty's ghost coming back to haunt him from the grave. He was completely terrified. So that's where the doll comes in. Flem is afraid of clowns, specifically Rusty. McFlam's rap sheet would take a day to read. He's a fat scum, and he's an idiot to boot. With a horrible That's butt. why he's always getting caught. He's been busted for burglary, mail fraud, arson, you name it. Everyone knows he operates out of the Snow White warehouse, but don't tell him. And with that, we can finally go and bust into Flem's place and get the bracelet back. So we're getting near the end of the chapter, and we're getting near the end of the video. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you like what I do here. This is Distron, signing off. If Flem is working out of this warehouse, it looks like he got careless. The door's unlocked.